Now I've got another beginner pattern for you today. In fact, I got this one from Barry Orr Clark's 2021 Fly Tying for Beginners. The pattern is the good old hare's ear nymph and it is one of the all-time greatest nymphs. Now, it's not a particularly hard tie, but it's not a really fast tie either. You're probably not gonna knock this thing out in three minutes. And I'm putting this in the beginner series because there's one technique in here that it's good for a beginner to learn how to do, and that is splitting thread to make your dubbing noodle. Of course, you don't need to do this for a lot of materials. Something like a rabbit or a super fine, well, that's easy enough to dub onto a single strand of thread. But something like a wool or an angora goat or this hare's ear, well, that's not as easy. So being able to do this with a, a split thread or a dubbing loop, well, that can be a useful technique to know. So there it is in the vise, pretty standard hare's ear. Not a bead head, but maybe a gold ribbed hare's ear. Just standard mayfly nymph. Got a little wing case on it, four or five legs coming off each side. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. This is a one extra long, standard wire barbless nymph hook. Get that flat in there. And I am gonna weight this. This is 015 lead free wire, maybe six or seven wraps here. and I'm using brown thread. This is a 140 denier. And I'll tell you why I'm using a 140. It's because I'm not gonna create a dubbing loop. I'm gonna split this thread to, you know, make a semi-dubbing loop out of this thread. So go ahead and put a few wraps in front and behind that weight to lock it in. Take it to the start of the bend here. Now for the tail, just take a, a medium-sized tuft from that hair's mask, and you'll want to probably get it from the cheeks. That usually gives you the longest hair, the longest guard hairs. And it's not a terribly long, but it's not insignificant either. So after you pulled a little bit of that under fur out, I didn't get it all. You can see some of it's still in there, but we'll be okay. Several wraps to so just lock that in. That's gonna be okay with our tail right there. Now, just a few wraps up here. We'll use this fluff to kind of give us a little base right up here until we get to that weight. Now I've got a little bit of mess here to trim, but that won't take too long. Okay, that's a little shaggy, but we're gonna be just fine. A few wraps to lock that in. Now we'll leave our thread right here behind the weight and take a small piece of oval tinsel. This is a medium. And I'm gonna just catch it in right on top, about right here where my thread is. And we'll catch it in all the way to the back. Now here's why I'm using this thick thread. If you see this, I'll lay it against my fingernail. I'm gonna to try to get it flat. So it's not entirely flat just yet. So I'm gonna let it spin counterclockwise a little bit until it is as, about as flat as I can get it. Then I'm gonna take my bodkin and then just poke it through here and try to split this thread in even strands. Now, after you can successfully get this split with a, a bodkin or a needle, if you see this, I've got two strands right there um, coming off this one strand. I'm gonna go with the, maybe the thicker side, put just a little bit of wax on it. That did take me a little while to get those split, but the next time we do it, I'll show you a different trick. And take some of your, you know, the fuzzy under fur and a couple guard hairs from your hair's mask. And we're just going to kind of touch dub, spin them on a little bit on one side of this thread. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough. And I've got probably a, a three inch noodle on here. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna spin this. And this is a pretty shabby noodle. But, okay, I think it's gonna work. We're a little messy. But after you get that body on, just go ahead and wrap this up. Four or five wraps for this rib should be sufficient. Now 
Now we're gonna take some pheasant tail fibers, a dozen or so right here. Try to keep the tips aligned. What we're gonna do, we're gonna fold these back as the legs. It's gonna be our wing case and our legs. So lay it on top of the hook and judge it long enough that when you fold them back from right behind that eye, that's gonna be the length of your legs. So I think that's gonna work right there. I'll do a little pinch wrap right here and keep them on top for now. A few wraps going forward, not all the way to the eye, but maybe a couple eye lengths behind it. And envision folding those back. That's gonna be how long our legs are. I think we're gonna be okay right there. So let's take our thread back here to where we're gonna flip this wing case over. And now we're gonna split our thread and do the same thing again. This time, I wanna try this little Stonfo thread splitter. It's got a little groove in it right there. You put that around your thread, and then when you press down on it, it pushes a needle up through it. So sometimes this makes it a little bit easier than trying to do it with a needle or a bodkin. Not always, though. Still sometimes can take you a couple of a tries. So we'll just put it in there and push it up and see. Okay, I think we got close enough. One side is a little bit thicker than the other, but I think we can work with it. So let's go ahead and spread these out right here. And this one, we're gonna do the same thing, just a little bit of wax right here, and then touch some more of this hair's mask dubbing to one side here. Okay, now this one is a little bit smaller of a noodle, but it's still pretty significant because I want a kind of big thorax. So again, I'm gonna spin this, my bobbin holder here. Just tighten this noodle up. And we'll see how many wraps it takes us to build a big fat thorax here. And I've got a little bit of shag coming off the bottom. I can either plug that out or just try and trim it here. Okay, so I'm liking that profile all right. Just try to split these legs half on one side and half on the other. Doesn't always work, but you know, you can get it close enough. And we can use this wing case to split them up here in just a second. So I've got enough wraps on and I've got roughly half coming off of either side. I've got a few right here that if I can't bury them, I will have to trim, but I think we're okay. And we've got enough legs there. Now just fold this wing case over and then catch this off right here in front of these legs, right here behind the eye. Couple more tight wraps here. Now snip this excess. And I've got some right here. I could try to pluck these or probably singe them. We'll see what it looks like after we finish the head. And remember, this is a 140 denier thread, so I can't get too many wraps up here before my head starts getting too big. But it is a nymph. You don't necessarily mind a, a decent sized head on a nymph. So I think that's gonna work right there. Let's do a three or four turn whip finish. And take a look, see if we have any cleanup. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this one. Maybe I'll just take a little bit, uh, clean up that eye, make sure I can get my tippet through there. But a drop of head cement right there on that head. And some folks will also put the head cement or UV resin down along that wing case. I usually don't, but that's certainly an option. So there you go, my friends. Pretty standard hairs here. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.